Good morning. Happy, uh, very wet Thursday. I am Jamila Bay. You are listening to your station for jazz and justice here in the nation's capital. This is WPFW FM 89.3. And uh, you are listening to OMG, Oh My Government, the show where we consider all things about America and the people who live, work and play here. Um, I'm supremely excited to have my next guest on again. Um, he is a friend of the show and uh, someone who is doing amazing work. Uh, Reggie, uh, <laughs> Reggie Cummings, who is the brains, the mind and the creator of Black Travel Movement, a community of friends and family who share an interest in cultivating new friendships and Epic experiences through international travel. Um, Reggie, thank you so much for being with us today. Good morning, Jamila, and thank you for having me again. <laughs> Happy to be here. Okay. So what I what I want to do um, before before we hop into all that uh, we're going to be dealing with on today's show, um, I want to point out that you know. Um, the reason I was even prompted at this point to uh, have have Reggie on today is, you know, yet again, um, black travel is in the news and not necessarily for the best reason of all. Um, of course, uh, I'm talking about the black doctor being removed from the American Airlines flight. I'm not going, you know, say American Airlines again because whatever. But um the airlines had to issue a public apology, a statement uh, to Dr. Tisha Rowe, who is an African-American Caribbean uh, woman who boarded a flight from Jamaica to Miami wearing a sleeveless romper with her eight year old son. You know, she was asked by a flight attendant to get off the plane. And uh, once she was off the plane and found out what was going on, she was asked if she had a jacket or something to cover herself. When she didn't, uh, she would, uh, Dr. Rowe was told she would only be readmitted to the flight if she agreed to wrap herself in a blanket. Um, Dr. Rowe says she was humiliated and only complied so that she would not have to forfeit her seat on the plane and so she could, you know, fly home with her son. So... On the one hand, more black Americans are traveling today than at almost any other time in history. There is an asterisk there. Um, if we look at how much black travelers spent in 2011 to today, uh, since 2011, African-American traveler spending has increased from 48 billion. That's with a B, 48 billion dollars to 63 billion dollars. Um, we are the fastest growing segment of the population likeliest to take a flight. And uh, we are also, you know, bringing bringing entourages of friends, family and loved ones with us. So, you know, we're, we're going out more. Um, we're, we're still having experiences, though, that that are making uh, that are making headlines because. We are still not being treated as everyone else who wants to fr fly the friendly sky. So, um, again, Reggie Cummings is with me this hour. We're going to be talking about all things black travel. But, Reggie, uh, first of all, thank you for being with us today. I very much appreciate your time. You're welcome, and I'm happy to be here. Yeah, so, you know, my heart just broke with this. Uh, Doc, Dr. Rose just trying to get home, and she took pictures of the outfit, Um it, I saw nothing wrong with it. I saw a very stylish doctor standing, taking a selfie. Yeah, I, I saw the pictures as well, and I didn't see anything wrong with it. Um, you know, for, for me, the, the bottom line is, and, you know, as a child of the 70s and 80s, growing up in Boston, I am quite familiar with how race relations uh, both evolve and then constrict and then evolve again and then constrict again. Um, you know, you would want to think that the person who made the call, who made the decision to ask her to leave the flight or to ask her to put on a blanket, would have done the same um, regardless of race. But we both know, I think we all know that that's probably not the case. 
Um, and this decision, you know, if not totally race-based, was at least influenced by her race. Um, agree. Dr. Rowe herself, even in a statement, you know, said, you know, this, if, if, if a woman in a size two outfit was wearing the same thing, no one would have, you know, batted an eye, you know, um, uh, we are p- being policed. We are policed for being black. Um, and, and again, I have to, I have to juxtapose this particular story against the backdrop of, Black people are traveling more. Black families are traveling more. Um, when we recognize that this happened, or you know, just just before the Essence Festival, well, during during the kickoff of the Essence Festival, um, when when thousands upon thousands of Black folks flocked to New Orleans uh, for for music and and culture, um, even at at our joy up in the up in the air we we are reminded that you know we still have work to do um however i i do want to point out you know travel does help to break down those barriers this is this is a setback uh for you know for those of us who might you know I don't know, want to wear rompers on American Airlines flights or whatnot but you know it's not it's certainly not going to stop the momentum that's in place that's that's making black folks want to get up and go around. I I, I wonder, you know, a lot of times we, we ask, oh, well, what can we learn from this or whatnot? I, I, I don't know that there's anything to learn from this. I think um, I think we just we, we need to, you know, make ourselves known that we're not real happy again with American air and 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 keep keep going, keep keep flight alive, so to speak. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, okay, Essence Festival just happened. Uh, you had a profound and huge and very fun-looking presence. I was up here working in the rain. Um, let, let's talk about Essence for a moment. For folks who don't know, uh, the Essence Festival happens every year. It's it's a an extravaganza of all things that an, a reader of Essence magazine would enjoy: fashion, food, music. Uh, and fabulousness all around, and black travel movement had a presence there. Talk about what you were at the Essence Festival doing this year, please. Um, this was the 25th anniversary um, of the Essence Music Festival, and uh, like you mentioned, it is indeed a celebration of our culture, our style, our music, and, and the influences we have around the world, really. Um Black Travel Movement organized the trip. We had, you know, approximately 600 of our members join us for the trip um, that came directly with us. But we had, you know, 8,000 members at Essence in, in total. So it was uh, it was it was an amazing experience. Um, we really enjoyed ourselves. Uh, like I said, this was the 25th anniversary, so they had. Uh, you know, really went above and beyond to make it an amazing experience. Um, some of the conference conversations, some of the uh, networking opportunities, just, just really top of the line opportunities for us to engage and, and dialogue and entertain and, and have fun. Um, I read something yesterday that said, you know, after 25 years, Essence is becoming more of a family reunion and not just uh, a music and culture show simply because, you know, we, our people and our culture, love it so much, love the opportunity it provides. Um, and so over the years, folks have made lifelong friends and extended their networks and, and met great people. You get a chance to mix and mingle with celebrities and stars and entertainers, and it's just really a, a great, great experience. Um, and I have to tell you, the highlight of the entire weekend for me personally was an opportunity to hear our forever First Lady, uh, mm-hmm. the beautiful Michelle Obama, speak on Saturday night. Uh, she had a what I would call like a fireside chat with uh, Gail and uh, just really spoke from her heart 
talked about um, the excellence that you know we are displaying and performing around the world. She talked a, a little bit about politics, relationships, race, money, just the whole gamut. And you know, we love her, and mm-hmm. she couldn't she couldn't do a thing wrong in our eyes. And it was just a marvelous experience for yeah. me personally. Indeed, I. I- Again, I was up here working um, in the rain. In the rain, and 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 I was I was not able to <coughs> attend. But um, the the beauty of the modern day is that Twitter made me feel like I was right there. Um, uh, the the first lady Michelle Obama, the forever first lady, as you were correct to um, remind us all. Um, she wore her hair, uh, in, in a natural kind of style. Um, she had on a sequin jumpsuit that was incredible. They don't make it in my size, so whatever. Um, but it was beautiful. And, uh, you know, Michelle Obama, uh, who is always eloquent, always amazing, got a lot of headlines about talking about when, when you marry someone, you want to make sure you're marrying an equal. So <laughs> that was that was an interesting, you know, that was an interesting point of view. I guess that means, uh, you know, make sure that you have a passport and your partner has a passport and the kids yeah. have a passport. Everybody gets passports. Ah! <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, it's a common conversation in the black travel diaspora, mm-hmm. um, you know, Essence is a predominantly female event. Uh, Essence magazine is a magazine for females, so that's only natural. And, and I think she really connected with the ladies in the audience and just gave them some guidelines and inspiration. It really about deciding on who you connect yourself with, who you make your life partner, and, uh, her comments went over very well with the crowd. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> you know, so, so yeah, everybody, you know, I guess struggling to encourage people. Do, do you find that people who, uh, who take part in black travel movement activities are, we know the ones who are buying tickets, showing up at events or, or, or travelers who want to get up, want to get out there. Um, do, do you still feel like some folks are, are, are in partnerships where, you know, half of them or the family is resistant and doesn't understand why there's the one with the wanderlust there? Is that, are, are we getting rid of that yet? You know what? Um, it is still a very prevalent conversation. It's a real dynamic. Um, Oftentimes, there are conversations about um, why ladies take so many girls' trips <laughs> because, you know, they leave their men at home. Or, and I don't know that the men, nece- men necessarily decide to stay, but, but females or the women are traveling in, in far greater numbers than, than the men are. Um, you know, the gap is closing, but, but it's still a predominantly female uh, engagement, I, I would say. But... Uh, you know, it's getting better, but definitely still a lot of that in the conversation. Well, I just want to point out that there was a study, a recent study that came out in the journal Frontiers in Psychology, and it found that 12.9 percent of mothers, women people, um, experience, quote, high burnout. One of the things that women mothers can do to mitigate that high burnout is to take a trip. So um, this is not just, I mean, you know, this is this is mental health and, and it's backed by science, the peer-reviewed journal Frontiers in Psychology. So who are we to argue that I don't need to be going on more trips as a woman mother person? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I absolutely agree. Um you know, and there are even other dynamics who look at the achievements women are making in education and professionally. You know, they are exceeding um, in every dynamic. And, you know, part of what keeps you strong, what keeps you healthy, what re-energizes and re-encourages you is an opportunity to get some time to yourself. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people like to take that time to travel and create 
new experience as an explorer. And uh, I'm here for it. Absolutely. Now, you know, less less um, anyone I'm married to or people who, who are in a similar relationship status as myself, you know, married moms, uh, less less anybody get get their, you know, get their passport in a in a in a knickers or whatever. Um, there was another study that I want to point out to um, a British survey found. Now, this is Great Britain, but people are people everywhere. We should go over to England and see that. Um, half of British adults surveyed said that their favorite childhood memory was of a family vacation. So uh, travel has benefits uh, of, of for everyone. Travel has benefits that uh, are long remembered. And, you know, it, it, it's a wonderful thing to break down the literal barriers that stand between us and, and borders that that separate people. Um, I, I, I am a I am a big proponent of travel. I, I love the fact that um my own travel experience is now being shared by other folks. When I was when I was 14 years old, I had the wonderful opportunity to be an exchange student. I, I was uh, <laughs> I, people love to remind me, you know, I was I was pretty much the only black person they had seen that week in Swansea, Wales. And uh, I, I had a fabulous time. And to this day. Most of the benefits that I have enjoyed in life come from the fact that I don't mind meeting new people. I am, you know, within reason, you know, I'm I'm not as fearless as some, but, um, you know, I, I like a good adventure. And these are things that, that I feel like um, not just uh, not just Americans, but people all over the world are starting to, you know, understand as the price of travel becomes more in reach of more people, uh, more people are doing it. And again, you know, uh, I, I love to point out this, you know, it, it the amount of money that black Americans have spent on travel in the past decade uh, has increased by more than 12 million forgive me i i misspoke i said million i i need the b 12 billion dollars um our our spending as black people in the us has outpaced what one would expect from its inflation and uh you know this is this is a big deal we 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 feel like uh right now uh if 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 you're able to get up and go, you should do so. So, um, I, I want to get your advice. Okay, so, uh, Reggie, you, what, what do you got coming up? Where do you, where do you have people clamoring to get to go see? Um, so, Black Travel Movement has, you know, a half a million members across all of our social media and internet platforms, um, with a membership that large. It's uh, important that we have an ample offering of experiences and opportunities for our members. So we basically do about 25 trips a year. Um, we have done the continent. We've done Egypt, South Africa. We've done Morocco. We've done Greece. We've done Bali. We've done Thailand. We're, we're basically everywhere around the globe. Um, we have, to date done trips to five of the seven continents, and we're going to hit the other two, Antarctica and Australia, next year. Um, uh, an Antarctic expedition? Absolutely. Uh, there are tons of, of folks who want to be a, a member of the quote-unquote Seven Continents Club. Um, you know, most people get the big five done pretty early in their travel careers and uh, do Australia and eventually Antarctica to complete the set, uh, I would say. Um, but I want to take a step back to the a point you made earlier. Um, there were really two sides to the travel coin from my perspective. It is critically important that we, the African-American community, get out into the world and see how others are living, connect with others from around the world. But it's equally important that they see us. One of the things, one of the stories I often tell 
is that early in my travel career, um, regardless of where I was around the world, I would always get compared to whoever the hot black guy was. So for a long time, when people around the world would see me, they'd say, Eddie Murphy, (laughs) Arsenio. (laughs) Uh, And it was really cool when I was Barack Obama, Barack Obama, Obama. Um, And one of the things I realized is that around the world, people's image of the black American man came from the media, you know. So they all thought they thought we were all actors or rappers or entertainers or athletes. And I think it's really important that we get out there so that they see that we are doctors and lawyers and teachers and radio hosts and business owners and fathers and doctors and teachers. The world needs to see a true image of us from us and not from music and music videos and movies and what they see on the news. So it's really important that we get out there to have experience, but also that we present ourselves, our true selves to the world because they need to see us. Absolutely. I I, I know that um, you and I, who we, we've known, we've known of each other. We've known each other a few years. And my, my first knowledge of, black travel movement was you taking a parcel of black men on a ski trip to Japan? Ah, uh, that was not a trip that I organized. That was okay. a trip that I went on. Okay. But that was really the 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 seed that kind of got planted to to start black travel movement. Cuz uh, black men don't ski and black men don't go to Japan, right? <laughs> uh, well, it, 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 being a being a black skier, I'm, I'm also part of the uh, at large black ski community and uh the, the story goes that uh a, a friend of mine a guy i know from morehouse alumni and from the general ski community he and another friend uh were booking a trip to japan because it's the mecca for skiing and snowboarding and so you know they thought they'd get eight or ten hardcore guys to go over to japan and go skiing but what happened is someone told someone who told someone who told someone and they ended up getting, you know, approximately 200 people, African American people, both men and women, uh, to take a trip to Japan to go skiing for a week, and it was one of the most amazing experiences of my life. Mm-hmm. One of the better weeks of my life, and from that experience, I, I came home with a sense of, oh my God, that was amazing. I need to share it. And so, uh, you know, I thought about doing a YouTube channel or just posting it on my own Facebook group, on my own Facebook page. I decided to create the Black Travel Movement just to show people the kinds of experiences that we were having around the world and, you know, to get them to show me what kind of experiences they were having. I started the group with 200 of my friends. Mm -hmm. A week later, there were 2,000 people. A month later, there were 20,000 people. A year later, there were 200,000 people. And today we have a half a million people in the group. And if you are a member of the community, you are exposed to amazing experiences that people are having around the world. And it is encouraging, it is enlightening, it it is inspiring. And, you know, I hear it all the time from our members that it's one of the best parts of their Internet or social media life. Now, one one of the things that's um, so heartwarming to me is that we see we, we who have gotten into the group, and you know, I I, I, I I'm in the group, um, and I haven't yet had the opportunity to take a a trip with uh, Black Travel Movement. We're, we're going to work on that, but um, it's it's a family friendly place to be. Um, the recognition that our little ones need to have their horizons brought, need to uh, experience learning through travel, that that's just a given and understood. Um, I, I think that I think that's one of the the better parts about the group, too, that it's it's you know, every everyone gravitates toward what, yeah. what their interests are. But for we who are, uh, uh, you know, our, our lives are wrapped up in our kids a lot of times. Um, that's something that you support as well. And, and I want to, first of all, tip my hat 
proverbially because I'm not wearing one. But I want to tip my my imaginary hat to you for that and and talk about yeah, little people traveling. It's it's actually not as hard as some people might make it out. Let me let me tell you, I I am really really excited because on Monday in three short days or four short days, whatever day this is, we are doing a family trip to Paris, and we have 50 families going with us, and the kids in the group range from 2 to 20. Um, You know, a lot of mom and dads, my mother's going, uh, my wife is going, my mother-in-law's going, uh, my kids are going, and it's just uh, going to be an amazing family dynamic, a bunch of families coming together, the kids will get with the kids, and the adults will connect with the adults. And we will tour Paris. We will see. Um, we're going to take part in what is called the Black Paris Experience. You know, we'll go to mm. the places where Josephine Baker sang and where, you know, James Baldwin it, it, wrote. <laughs> James Baldwin wrote and, and yeah. things like that. It's it's really going to be an amazing experience, and to be able to share that with kids, it, it can literally change their lives. Literally. Oh, absolutely. I I, I know just going to. English speaking Wales changed mine. Um, yeah. Now, the last time you were on the show, and I, because I, because I know, I know, I'm going to get messaged. Jamila, didn't you say you was going go on the trip to Paris? And eh? yeah, I, it it confl- I, I'd already paid for a particular summer excursion for for my little guy, and there there was no refund for that. So I, I'm I'm sending him. <laughs> To, to his thing. He's traveling. I am not. I'm traveling to drop him off at this camp. But, uh, yeah. And, and, and I, I, my, my French is terrible, but I understand pretty well. So we'll, we'll, we'll have to, you know, next, next Paris trip I'm coming on. But, you know. We are, we are going to do more and more family oriented <laughs> trips. Um, we'll do them in the summertime. We'll do them around school vacations. And, you know, we try to create like I said, life-changing or life-impacting experiences for our young people, uh, whether they be, you know, 10 years old or 20 years old. Absolutely. So um, now, now, so you take off on Monday. Um, where do, where are people, uh, where are the trends for where folks want to go to? Uh, I know for, for a, for a good minute, everybody was, oh, Dubai, 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 Dubai. <laughs> yeah. Um uh, I I think with you know with it, we know that climate change is a hoax and everything, but I think that with the fact that it's it's hot in a lot of the U.S. Um, or or perhaps people have done Dubai, there there are some other ideas coming up. What, where are you hearing people uh, begging to get to? You know what the absolute I'm absolutely joyed to report that the hottest thing right now is the continent. Folks are flocking to. South Africa, uh, Ghana has a program going on right now uh-huh. that they call the Year of Return. So yes. they are encouraging American travelers to come back to the land of your forefathers, come visit Africa. So people are going to Ghana, Tanzania, Kenya, just all over the continent. And, and it's really uh, amazing to see that. Um, I actually even enjoyed uh, my time in Egypt and uh, Morocco. It, it's just the continent is hot right now. Mm. So, yeah, Ghana is celebrating the year return. It's 400 years since uh, the first ships bearing stolen African human beings uh, landed on these American shores. And um, uh, I, as as somebody who has long enjoyed Ghana Black Star soccer, um, yeah, that that's that that's that's really encouraging i mean we we who are here in these u s as as you know descendants of enslaved african people um it 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 makes my my little grinch heart grow three sizes to know that you know the the interest in 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 seeing the land from you know which we ultimately come from um that that's something that that's happening uh uh, I, I wonder if if you have any trip, uh, you know, travel hacks, tips, or or whatnot for people who 
who are interested in, you, you know, putting a trip together to Africa, or how can they, you know, work with you to do such a thing? Um, you know what? So we basically have two opportunities. Um, Black Travel Movement curates trips for our members where you can register for a trip, pay your deposit, and then pay for the trip over a period of months. Um, and that's great if you're um, able, willing, and wanting to kind of join a group of, of folks who are, you know, of a similar ilk to, to go and visit wherever you want to go. But we also uh, do concierge service where if you have four friends or ten friends or twenty friends who want to build your own personal trip, we will help you curate that. Um, you know, we have a, a group of travel experts who can basically create whatever kind of experience you want to create. One of the things um, that is really uh, important and that I, I enjoy so much about the group is the education you can get. Um, if you go into our group, you can put in the name of any city or any country, and you will get 10 or 20 or 50 or 100 or 1,000 posts from people who have visited. You can ask questions. You can get information. So um, it's really helpful uh, in that regard, to help people to discover how to travel, where to travel. Um, so, someone told me the other day that uh, they would have never, ever thought to go to Vietnam, but, you know, they saw that a bunch of folks had gone to Vietnam or a bunch of folks had gone to uh, Brazil. And it, it's really uh, a, a, an amazing thing to see the influence that my travel, your travel, the travel of our members is having on the community at large. It's really inspirational. And like I said, it educates and encourages people just to kind of take the leap. Um, I'd also like to add that, you know, one of the things that is really important to me, and we have travelers of every ilk. Um, we have members who don't even have a passport but are working towards getting one. We have people who have never been out of the country. They've only been to Las Vegas or have only been to Jamaica. And, you know, the, what they're seeing out of our other members really encourages them to kind of go farther, do more, have a wider swath of, of experiences. And uh, it's, I love watching it. That's fantastic. Uh, we're talking, well, we are listening to right now uh, Reggie Cummings. He is the creator of Black Travel Movement. Um, statistically speaking, I know a bunch of listeners to this program have to be in the group because I recognize your names. Um, and uh, we are going to take a very short break, but I do want to open up the phone lines. If, if, if callers want to come in and uh, ask some questions of where to go, what's going on, or, you know, share, share your story about Essence. You, you probably saw, you know, some event Reggie put together down there. Uh, we are at 202-588-0893. Give us a ring. Uh, we're going to take a very short break and be right back. Reggie Cummings will still be with us, and uh, we're going to continue this conversation. Conversation. Do stay with us. So come on, baby, and let the good time roll. Hello, DMV community. The Bowles Administration, the D.C. Entertainment Office, and Georgetown University have launched the first ever D.C. Music Census, and we want to hear from you. This is the largest citywide data collection effort of D.C. music industry ever, which is pretty awesome. This data will help us get an in-depth look at what's happening, help identify how best to support our music culture, and build opportunity in the future. None of this is possible without your insight and opinion. We encourage anyone working in the D.C. music industry to participate. The online survey only takes a few minutes. And you can find it at dcmusiccensus.com. WPFW supports this. We hope you do too. Come on, baby, let the good time roll. WPFW's 2019 Local Station Board election is underway. A donation of $25 by June 30th gives you the right to vote. Want to do more than donate? Consider running as a candidate to serve on your local station board. Visit elections.pacifica.org and cast your candidacy by completing the nomination package before June 30th. E-ballots will be issued to members with an email. Members in need of a paper ballot can email nes at pacifica.org or leave a voicemail at 510-854-9663 indicating their full name, 
address, and telephone number. Please help make this election green by filling out a ballot request form on elections.pacifica.org indicating the email you would like us to use to send you a ballot. Ballots go out August 15th, 2019. Welcome back. We are talking to Black Travel Movement's creator, Reggie Cummings, and uh, a, a couple people have sent me messages saying, uh, so uh, a couple people have sent me messages saying, oh, uh, tell Reggie, hey, uh, that that those couple people, um, I'll give Tara B a shout out, and uh, also Amita B. So, Reggie, hi from those folks who I'm sure you know who they are. Um, in the meantime, um, a whole bunch of folks who who are uh, very excited about the experience they've just had at Essence um, are, are also it, it's funny. Nobody nobody wants to call in, but uh, they're they're all kind of blowing up my phone at the moment, Reggie. So I'm just going to read a couple of quotes and and, and take it from there. Oh, this was so much fun. Um, how many, ask Reggie, how many marriages is the group up to now? Um, <laughs> that's an interesting question. Um, there have been a couple of marriages, and I'm sure at this point there have actually even been a couple of babies made. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's really, it is so wonderful to watch people connect. Um, it, it, it really is, and, and to be a part of bringing them together, um, whether it happens organically or whatever. And, and I'm not just talking about, you know, romances, because while that certainly happens, there are also friendships and, and uh, all kinds of connections being made through sharing experiences, and it, it is a beautiful thing to watch. Oh, that that's that's fantastic. Um, you know, tra- travel brings people together like no other experiences really do, and and it's 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 important to, you know, share in that and and make sure. Uh, another another question that I've I've had sent in is okay, ask Reggie what trip he would like to do over. I don't know if that means do over as in. I need a do over because I didn't like what happened or it was so great. Let's do it again. I don't know. There's no context, but what trip would you like to do over Reggie? You know what? <laughs> um, I had my first visit to South Africa. Uh, we did Cape town and Johannesburg and through a little, uh, two day safari in between. Um, it, it was fascinating. It, it was life impacting. Um, and I cannot wait to get back to South Africa. I, uh, we have a trip planned to uh, the Afropunk celebration uh, that happens on New Year's Eve in South Africa. So mm-hmm. I, I really want to get to the continent as much as I can. South Africa is right now my favorite country. Um, but there are some others. Um, I really, really enjoy Japan. Um, the Japanese people have a genuine concern and compassion for the well-being of others and it's it's amazing to kind of be a part of that um i thought that um, morocco was beautiful uh, thailand and bali I, I like asia a lot as well um so there are a number of trips that we have made um annual and um you know what i, I also really like <laughs> I'm kind of biased because I have literally been to Cuba eight times, but um, I, I really enjoy Cuba with, uh, you know, with all that's going on with mm-hmm. the guy that I shall not name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you all know him as 45. Um, mm-hmm. You know, with all that he's doing to try to close down Cuba after Obama did a lot to try to open it up, I'm looking forward to, um, to a time when, you know, things and our government get back on track, and um, we can visit Cuba again. The Afro-Cuban experience is, is something that uh, I think every black American uh, needs to, to be a part of. So uh, I, I'm really looking forward to getting back to Cuba. Oh, goodness. That, that yeah, yet another. Every, every time I talk to you, my list of places that when I'm, 
yeah, I need to, I, I need to just stop. I'm going, you know what? We do have, we do have a couple callers that want to get on, but I am going to ask you this question for me. I'm not speaking for anybody else. Okay. Reggie, um, I know that you have no experience dealing with workaholic people who are like, I'm going to take a trip, but first I'm going to take a trip. And then, um, I, 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 I'm excited to think about where I can go and what I can do, but, um, I, I never actually pull the trigger and make it happen. I I, I just I, I I like to think that I'm being spontaneous when I go away for a weekend. But I need you to take are, a trip. You are not alone in that. And one of the the things that kind of a joke we tell in the travel community, if I or anyone puts together an amazing experience and say, "Hey, who wants to go do this?" Like ten people will raise their hand, and then when it's time to pay the deposit. Three people will pay a deposit, and then only two people actually end up going. So, um, and, you know, I understand life happens. Um, you have commitments. You have uh, all kinds of things that you have going on in your personal life. But it is really important that you make time for yourself. <laughs> like, do it for yourself because no one else is going to do it for you. And once you get started... You know, once you begin to do it consistently or regularly, you won't want to do without it. <sighs> well, we we there there is science. There is science that tells us it takes about three days in nature. So for 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 people who might not be interested in cities, kind of like me, I, I do it all when I get around to doing it. Um, three days in nature, and you see measurable dis- differences in blood pressure and uh, stress hormone levels coursing through the blood. You see some, I need to get in a study personally to see, to see yeah. if inflammation markers decrease after three days. There's a theory that they probably do. Um, and I, I've, I volunteer as tribute to go out in the woods for three days and see, you know, what, what happens. But yeah, it's, it, it's, it's important to get away. You know what? It's also important that I not leave people on hold a whole bunch of times. You, you're, we've got people want to talk to you, Reggie. So we're going to just open up these phone lines. Good morning, caller. Welcome to OMG. Thank you for calling in your question for our guest, please. Good, good morning. I didn't have a question. I wanted to make a quick comment if I could. Oh, yes. Uh, I had uh, never heard of Black Travel Movement, but I feel joy that that is happening because I just wanted to speak to the transformative aspect that it can have on your life from a personal point of view. Uh, Before I graduated from Shaw University in 1965, I had never traveled more than four hours on a Greyhound bus uh, from my sharecropping hometown to Shaw, and then I went into the Peace Corps, to Turkey, Uh, and then I traveled throughout the Middle East. This was in 1967, 68, Uh, and it just transformed my life. So years after, I got a lot of opportunities to travel uh, because I came back and became uh, an anthropologist. But one of the things that I've found over the years, I have been an advocate of, of getting young people, particularly young black people, into traveling. Uh, and oftentimes me and some of my African-American colleagues have found it very difficult because people oftentimes don't grow up with that sort of traveling, uh, I don't know, adventuresome type of orientation. So over the years, I've tried to develop those opportunities. I'm now 76, so I'm I'm very happy to hear that Reggie uh, and others are making those opportunities possible because they can transform your life. Mm. Well, thank you so much. I I appreciate you calling in. Let's get this next person on. Good morning. Welcome to OMG. Good morning. Good morning. It's been an entire year since you had this gentleman on. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Duncan Hines, uh, uh, Betty Crocker, I'm talking to me some Jamila today. How you doing? Uh, wonderfully, wonderfully. <laughs> 
Thanks for calling in. Let tells you how sweet you are, right? <laughs> At no. least by virtue of the ears, anyway, and the eyes, too. But anyway, moving along, um, so, sir, I'd like to address something that does, uh, put a crimp in uh, me brushing uh, and shining off my brand new passport and getting uh, signed up with you. And, and just uh, certainly has nothing to do with your company, but of late, all of these strange, mysterious deaths occurring uh, in the Central America region and a couple of other places around the world. I mean, used to be, uh, what I guess, a uh, slight case of diarrhea or disagreement with the water, but to go places and drop dead, that's uh, a bit extreme. Can you? Is there any update or inside track you can give us on this before we decide to travel internationally? You know, one of, one of the things I uh, try to convey to my members is, you know, use common sense. Um, do a little research on the place you're going to, to go. You know, when you're there, make smart decisions and do things that are going to keep you safe. Now, you know, as, as an editorial, I will say that, unfortunately, life happens. Uh, and sometimes bad things happen in life. But... While, you know, the news media will highlight three or four or eight or however many deaths happened in any particular country, um, yesterday, 10 people got killed in Chicago and 14 people got mm -hmm. killed in New York. Um, and it's not until the media chooses to sensationalize or put a particular spin on something that, you know, we look at it as though it's all of a sudden a, a catastrophe, catastrophe or disaster. Um, life happens every day, and, and mm -hmm. so does death. Um, but you don't, I, I you don't have any, you don't have any uh, direct input as to the nature or causation of, 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 of the illnesses that, that cause these people to die. I, I so, do not. Yeah, we, we're going to let the, the authorities. Yeah, exactly. We're, yeah, we're going to let the authorities in the Dominican Republic address that. Um, and uh, we got a couple more folks that want to get on. So we're going to go to the next caller. Good morning. Welcome to OMG, caller. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yes, I had a question about the best way to plan a safe solo trip as a woman, like how to book the right resort and also book the right excursions and tours so that you are safe but also have a really good time on your own. Um, that is a conversation that happens all the time in black travel. Movement. And, again, I will say it's really a matter of doing your homework ahead of time. Um, talk to people who have gone, do some research online, join groups like Black Travel Movement, and engage the community uh, to get tips and pointers and, and ideas. Um, you know, check with the State Department on, you know, travel ratings for, for different places. And But there are many places, many, many places that are perfectly safe for solo female travelers. But again, make smart decisions and don't do things that, that put you at a higher risk. Right. And and the group is a great resource. I mean, you the my Google foo is strong, but to be blunt, any any travel question that I've had, uh, I've been able to find people, um, and and the particular group to to inform me. So I I do I do travel. I just haven't done the the passport requiring trips in a moment. So we, we're going to fix that. We're going to fix that, Reggie. All right. Uh, let me get this last person on. Uh, we're, we're coming toward the end of the hour. So uh, we're going, we're going to make this our last call. Good. Good morning, caller. Welcome to the program. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for uh, letting me. <laughs> come on. It struck me that uh, uh, the, the traveling is great. Um, uh, real, real quickly. When I was a kid, uh, one of my neighbors used to take uh, my friends, you know, across country, and, and my parents, you know, could never afford it. Uh, they went every summer, you know, and they would send me back these postcards, uh, postcards, you know, Grand Canyon, and so forth and so on. Anyway, um, so I never got to go. I still have a dream today, you know, to buy a bus and take kids across country. I'll, I'll, I'm going to get to that one day. But um, I've been to Africa uh, several times, and. Uh, uh, been to uh, four countries, you know, Egypt, Ghana, uh, uh, 
uh, uh, Togo, Benin, and uh, people always ask me, you know, uh, what about the animals and so forth? <laughs> you know, I said, you know, um, uh, excuse me for saying this, I said, you know, the white man killed them all, but you've got to go over there and see it. You know, we, you, when you go over to Africa, you know, you, you feel it in the air before you hit the ground. You know, people say, oh, you know, so that's, mm-hmm. that's what I, I encourage you. People travel, you know, go to the Grand Canyon, you know, go, mm-hmm. go to Mexico, go to, go, go to Africa, you know, sacrifice. I, I, I worked, uh, I got a business and, and two, uh, guard jobs, you know, to get me and my girlfriend, you know, over to Africa, uh, and <clears throat> it's worth it. So that's all I want to say. Okay. Well, thank you for calling in. Yes, travel is a good thing. I had somebody um, uh, text me a question for you, Reggie, and, and this person says, ask him about the best credit cards for travel. Um, are they? Is it more important to get points or free stays? <laughs> you know, there is a lot of opportunity Um to earn free travel or discounted travel um, by using your credit card in a smart way. Um, uh, I want to point out that, you know, you can get in, get yourself into a deep hole if you do it incorrectly, you know, charging stuff and charging more stuff. But um, if you're you're smart about the way you use your credit cards, there are two that I would recommend. Um, One is the Chase Platinum Visa. Um, the Chase Visa gives you uh, three times the value for travel expenses and one and a half times or one times for other expenses. And then there's also uh, an American Express Platinum Travel Card. Those are the, the two best based on conversations and, and personal experiences. Um, but the hotels, the airlines all have cards. And um, like I said, if you use your card smartly to pay for your monthly or weekly expenses and then just pay them off you can uh, earn a lot of points pretty quickly excellent and it's an excellent it's an excellent way to get free or discounted travel okay jamila google's amex travel car <laughs> <laughs> fantastic so in the last in the last uh couple minutes before we go uh i i just kind of want to give you the floor what do you want what do you want listeners to know uh especially I'm, I'm i'm sure you're you're seeing the number in this group tick up i'm i'm <laughs> folks are folks are hopping in um you know what um being a three-year-old company and growing at the rate we're growing um obviously like like any business we go through growing pains we have learning experiences um but our objective is to really embrace everyone who wants to, you know, be a part of these experiences and from a business perspective to really provide an excellent experience at a good value. Um, It's really important that as a black business operating in this space, and you mentioned several times the amount of money uh, that is involved, you you really want to be excellent. You really do. And that's our goal and objective. And uh, if you are not a part of the group, please join us. You can find us on Facebook, Black Travel Movement, Instagram, Black Travel Movement, Twitter, and uh, our website, blacktravelmovement.net. Um, and before I go, I, I do want to make a shameless plug. <laughs> you have the floor. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, one of my other passions or interests is as a filmmaker. Uh, I have a film company, and my film company is right now filming a documentary on the history and evolution of black travel. Um, filmmaking is really about storytelling, and the story we are telling is how after the abolition of slavery, there were 11 million slaves and descendants of slaves living in the South. They all decided, or a great deal of them decided, that they wanted to get out of there. So they went north, they went to the Midwest, and they went out west. So mm-hmm. in, the early ni- in the early 1900s, travel was really about automobile traveling. Um, you know, as kids, we all remember going down south or out west to buy a car to see our family members. 
Um, imagine trying to do that in the early 1900s, uh-huh. where Jim Crow, racism, and people refusing to sell you services could really okay. Reggie, impact the experience. Give, giving you two lines. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're coming to the end. The Black Travel Movement documentary is going to tell that story, um, and it's coming to a theater near you around the beginning of 2020. Excellent. I want to thank you so much. This has been another edition of OMG, Oh My Government. I'm Jamila. And uh, thank you for giving me those extra seconds before the news gets started, Michael. We'll do it again next Thursday. Be well.